And we're back with the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Ambrose Ikboke joins us this morning for Off the Press. He's the chairman in Nugu State Chapter of the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria. Ambrose, it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Good morning to you. Yes, please. All right, then let's quickly take a look at the punch newspaper this morning. We have other papers, but we'll start off with the punch. And the punch says, INEC votes three billion naira to fight electoral cases. That's very impressive. APC, PDP, Labour Party, Defense and Commission's litigation budget. And litigation costly budget may not be enough. <laughs> That's what uh, senior lawyers are saying. Probably might just be a period where uh, legal practitioners are cashing out. Now, you, you find uh, on the punch, PDP vows to probe as Bainway Ward suspends IU and uh, United Kingdom to sanction Nigerians envoy uh, chides Fanny Kayode. So you're looking at the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, Afeni Ferry knocks Luayanwu's and uh, demands Ohanese's clarification on what is what you want to ask now. Uh, FS soar as foreign airlines hike exchange rate. I remember someone having a conversation. I mean, you know, maybe local flights would definitely just go. I, I, I told her, nothing has ever gone down anytime it goes up, especially when you talk about the prices of, you know, uh, FS. So that's not the case now. Uh, just before we move away from that, ex-governor donates 240 truck of foodstuff and uh, groups to feed 2,000 daily. That's what you find. We just move away from the punch. Let's go quickly to The Guardian this morning with the following headlines. NLC reconsiders strike as CBN opens vaults to banks. There's some writers there which you can uh, see on the screen. Uh, Greedy Cabal delaying refineries takeoff. Uh, UNN confers doctorate on Zenit Bank CEO Nyagu. We have more from the paper. CBN's new lending rate to raise construction materials cost. And uh, Edo gets tentative approval for airport in Auchi. Final few stories from The Guardian. Why Africans need knowledge transfer more than grants. Uh, an opinion article there by Aboyeji. Uh, you have Dia, the life and times of army general who cheated death. Remember, let's uh, quickly turn our attention now to The Guardian newspaper. We just took the Guardian. Okay, we just took the yeah. Guardian. So I'll move away from the Guardian and look at the Daily Trust. How NIS operative extort travelers at airports. That's uh, what you find that's boldly written. I paid $100 to get my virgin passport. I don't understand what that means. Uh, if you want to say new passport, then uh, cleared. That's what the passenger is saying. Eight officers sacked. 88 facing disciplinary measures and fan decries extortion. Mm. These are some of the writers you find underneath the board caption. Oil production increases to 1.7 million uh, barrel per day. That's what the federal government is saying. I mean, once upon a time, we did 2.8, 2. Point something. Uh, we shouldn't be talking about 3 million. Shouldn't we exceed it? Well, should we be celebrating that we're doing 1.7 now? Uh, question and of course can't wait to share the thoughts of our guests and i'm brian Dijans deny us accommodation uh and a cbn raises the alarm kogi balsa imo governorship polls apc rakes in over 1.3 billion from funds uh, it's like you know a revenue generating machine and of course another says the general who escaped execution finally bows out and uh, when it's time, you definitely have to go. Oladipo, Dia, that general. We talked about it this morning. We'll just leave it at that for the want of time. Finally, the Nation newspaper has the following headlines. Post-poll uh, post crisis. Are you under pressure to quit as PDP chair? Thought we'd hear the last of this. Um, more from the paper. Foreign reserves dip by 1.43 billion naira in 10 weeks. How unbundling of railways... Uh, pa, pa boost economy by experts. A writer there, devolution will encourage a competition, enhance true uh, federalism. Uh, 3.4 billion naira debt, court blocks oil government's accounts in four banks. 
uh, APC, Claire's Uzodema, Silver, Lion, and DME for primaries. Interesting, some old names popping up there, and why I dropped my ambition by uh, Falke. All right, uh, the, the nation also has um, a special. Uh, it says Donaldson Oladipodia, uh, that's the name I was looking for. 1944 to 2023, his last moments uh, by family, friends, aid. All right, um, we'll go over to our guest, um, Ambrose Iboki. Before we look at the other stories, just give us your thoughts on uh, the lives and, life and times of um, the late General Oladik Podia. Uh, he's been described by one of the papers, I think it's a tribune, uh, as the general who escaped final execution, and by the Guardian as uh, the general who cheated death. Ambrose. Uh, it's a name that I knew when I was growing up. I remember as a kid in primary school, uh, where we used to do current affairs. The name uh, the Rani Padilla uh, ran out with um, some certain names of the military elites of that era. Um, from post-1983 democracy, uh, till 1999, uh, there was some sort of a uh, military were mixed from um, uh, General Buhari then, uh, the album, the Bangida, Jitsu, Kiwe, uh, John Chagaya, Joshua Don Caro, Don Bali, John Martinianga, David Mark, you know, so uh, General Dia was also among the general then who came, you know, uh, later, you know, during then he, 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 his attendance to the height of the military career was when he was now chief of general staff. That was now tainted by uh, some call it a phantom coup that was uh, said to have been planned. Remember that during that era too, that uh, uh, a lot of prominent Nigerians were also thrown to jail for so called uh, coup, which was uh, found, found out to be a phantom coup. If Olusha Gobatanya was thrown to jail, Alad uh, Musaya uh, Radwa was thrown to jail, so and a couple of other Nigerians were thrown to jail that period. Jaradwa uh, was was not lucky enough to make it alive, to make it out alive, and Chief uh, Olusha Gobatanya was about to make it alive. And General Diaz was very curious because he was in government. The others were not in government, but he was in government, and he was the number two man. And then uh, he was, uh, you know, roped into that uh, coup uh, that was sent to a phantom and was convicted to die. But by some stroke of luck, and uh, my Christian tenets we say by divine intervention, uh, the person who was supposed to kill him died before him. And then uh, uh, Abu Salam took over. And then uh, the rest, we say, was it? They were all released, and then was allowed to go home. And they have survived almost uh, 25 years later, uh, after that uh, dwelling ordeal. So he has lived a good life. And one more thing, the lighter side, General D.I. was a handsome man. So he's, uh, in his young days, his pictures, the ladies were gushing at his pictures then. And then when he was going older, I could see that um, I used to admire the, the strand of white hair that was in front of his uh, hair in, 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 in the front. He looked very handsome. So he lived a perfect life and his family should be proud of him. <laughs> so we wish him that he should rest with the angel. But he's so rest in peace. All right, then. Uh, Ambrose, let's move away from that now and then talk about uh, INEC. I'd like you to share your thoughts on INEC's budget to fight electoral cases. They have put the figure of three billionaire. It, it doesn't sit well with, you know, the political parties that contended for, you know, contested this election. Let's not use the word, use the word contend. Uh, over for those who contend or contested the elections, Labour Party, PDP, among others, have said, hey, uh, this is so much. What are your thoughts? Litigation, the cost, the cost of litigation in Nigeria is very expensive. This is because the litigant is basically meant to carry 
the entire cost of litigation. Then the defense also has a lot of cost to entail. Now, when you come to INEC, different election cycles have shown that INEC is always entered as a respondent in many, almost all what cases that have to do with election matters. This pre election matter, uh, this post election uh, matters. And sometimes these issues drag for long. From stages of House of Assembly to the state government, to the House of Reps, to the uh, Senate, and then to the presidency. So imagine how many cases. And remember that. These cases are inspected by persons or and by political parties. So when we call for House of Assembly election, for example, imagine the number of parties Imagine even the number of intra-party issues. A bunch of these people I joined uh, uh, joined INEC as respondent. So what I'm trying the background I'm trying to lay here is that INEC has a preserver of litigation cases to attend to. Some of these cases are very high profile, which uh, senior advocates of Nigeria have to be assembled, uh, but the uh, government of them have to be assembled. So uh, the cost is not in the staggering when you look at it, but at the same time, when you know the cost of litigation in Nigeria, you'll find out that it, it may not be too much. But to avoid this kind of thing, I think INEC should be looking at volunteers in consecutive some of these cases. Uh, because if we want to pay all the lawyers the requisite uh, legal fee for defending INEC in every of these states, then um, INEC will not be able to bear the financial burden. And Nigeria taxpayers' money cannot bear that financial burden. So this is the time to start looking at constituting a team of volunteer lawyers, I mean, intelligent lawyers, that we have INEC to prosecute some of the litigation cases in the court going forward. We can start it from now. And so they will receive allowances, they will receive stipends, uh, the lawyers will receive stipends and allowances, and maybe a certificate of commendation and some other things uh, that we compensate for their time at the court. But so I pay the requisite legal fee for each person presenting them, even the three billion will not be enough. So INA should be uh, creative in trying to cut that cost of litigation during election seasons. All right. Thank you, Ambrose. Uh, uh, there's one that, uh, you know, tickles my fancy. That is on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust. Um, it talks about the Nigerian Immigration Service operatives uh, who are extorting travelers at the airports. And the reason it's making me, it's making me laugh is because I remember very clearly the immediate, the months, weeks, weeks, let me say weeks and maybe month, immediately after uh, President Mahmoud Buhari was sworn in, uh, the airports were free, empty of these touting uh, profiteering, racketeering and extortion. It wasn't there, you know. So, I mean, what do you say about this? This is a few months that the president leaves. And it seems to be almost like a post-mortem on his, uh, his administration. I remember even on the roads, Mercy, we didn't see policemen collecting money. All those points. The day, two days, three days, five days after the president came up. So what are your thoughts on this current article now where the Daily Trust has gone you know, under to find out that uh, immigration operatives at the airport are extorting, still extorting uh, passengers? I think big shame that we are still suffering this kind of ignominy in our country. When you go to uh, our sister African countries, even West Africa here, like Ghana, you don't see this kind of thing. Okay, sometime last year I was in Ghana, I had an issue with the vaccination, uh, uh, card, and, and then uh, the Ghana, the guy who was attending to me said, oh, next time, allow it to stay to the point travel with it. 
will allow you now, but because you have answered taking the vaccination, but next time it has to be so, so you know, accept things to me, and then you are not go. And then I crossed the line, I entered the city of Accra, I said, hey, if this was Lagos or Abuja, they would take me to a room and sneeze the hell out of me, collect all the things they can. That is the construct. So Nigeria Immigration Service has been a stretch tool of corruption. And anybody who pretends that he doesn't know, it's not telling the truth. I mean, go to Ethiopia. See the way their, their, their airports are working. See the way their airlines are working. Go to Kotoka Airport in Ghana. See the way it is working. Go to South Africa. Go to African countries. Let's not even compare ourselves with European countries. Now, we have people who are basically jobless, mingling around the airports, asking people who are coming in to, from the, from, uh, overseas to Nigeria or I said, well done, sir. Anything for us, sir. What beside you? If your documents are having issues, even the one they can sort out, they are their debt. They will magnify the problem, complicate the problem, all in a measure to bring out, to flip you of your unearned money. And nobody, why is it continuing? Nobody is prosecuted. Nobody suffers any consequence. So it is like I even stay there to make money, maybe for your guy back at the office. Hmm. Ambrose, so Ambrose, it, it, is yeah. a, it is something that is a change of, we need a change of mindset. Okay. The Nigeria, the staff of Nigerian Immigration Service are in Nigeria. And they are part of the bigger problem. Yeah, but Ambrose, Ambrose, so you, we don't you, expect yeah. Nigerian Immigration Service people yes. to be uh, holy. Yeah, Ambrose, do you remember the, 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 the immediate... Right thing. Yeah. When the entire country is not doing the right thing. Yeah, Am Ambrose, do you remember the immediate uh, aftermath of President uh, uh, swearing in uh, at the airports? It was like we had brand new airports. Those people were nowhere to be found. Ambrose, are you there? No, I can't hear you. I, I okay. Can't hear what... Yeah, I earlier talked about the immediate um, uh, aftermath of President Buhari's uh, swearing in. Um, these things, these practices had disappeared from the airports because of the perception that the president was going to come and fight corruption. Um, but we don't have time. I think we would, we'll have to say goodbye to you now. All right, Ambrose Iboke is a chairman in Ugo State chapter of uh, the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts, and you can tell why, uh, because he did uh, absolute justice to uh, the few headlines that he was able to analyze with us. I will take a break. When we come back, we have more discussions ahead uh, on the program. Please stay with us.